Hey guys, Dan here with your uh, Masked Singer Guesses. We are in uh, Group B this week for the first time. We're meeting six of these characters for the first time. One was revealed to us, um, which we'll get to, but uh, let's get started here with my guesses. Uh, I've got my handy-dandy notebook here with all of my clues. Um, so we're going to do these in the order of... Uh, their performances, except for the person that got voted off. Now, I do spoilers on here, so if you haven't seen the episode yet, watch the episode first before um, you watch this for my guesses uh, for the other ones. But okay, so we started off with The Frog. Um, this is a male performer. It was a black and white package, which originally led me to believe maybe it was someone older, um, but then I decided against that once I heard the singing. But um, he said he was plucked from a large creek, uh, fast as a lightning bolt was his uh, rise to fame. There was a bag of leftovers with, with uh, some hush puppies in there, a flyer for the 1996 Olympics, um, and then 100 5 and a $1 bill on like a ledge, so $106. And then uh, he said he's going to make everybody jump, jump. Uh, so, okay. So those were the clues from the package. And he sang, You Can't Touch This, the MC Hammer classic. Um, so, I think half of these clues, as usual, are uh, sort of ruses. I think Jump Jump, we're supposed to think it's somebody from Criss Cross, although one of those guys is dead. And I don't think, you know, we don't know the Criss Cross people by their names, right? Um, so, so, that was out. Um, okay, so... Because of the 1996 Olympics thing, the judges were thinking somebody from the Olympics. Uh, Jenny McCarthy even mentioned somebody that was nicknamed the Lightning Bolt. Um, and Ken Jeong was thinking Carl Lewis because he apparently sang the national anthem at one of the Olympics or something. Um, so, okay. The, here's, here's what I think on this. And I only base this on a small portion of the clue package, but also the voice. Um, you know, the whole black and white motif at the beginning, I think, was a ruse. I thought it was maybe somebody older because of that. But I think because of the voice, it's somebody younger. I think it's somebody that younger than MC Hammer. Um, my guess for this is Lil Bow Wow. I guess professionally known now just as Bow Wow. And here's my reasoning. Number one, the $106, he hosted um, the BET show 106th and Park for like two or three years. So I think that's that's where that comes in. And then the bag of leftovers with the Hush Puppies, he is, uh, I believe, from the South. Uh, and Nicole said that she thought because of the Hush Puppies it was somebody from the South. Um, but also, the, the bag with the Hush Puppies in it said leftovers on it. Leftovers are also known as a doggy bag. And not only is he Lil Bow Wow, but he even had an album called Doggy Bag. So, um, I, my guess for him is Lil Bow Wow for the frog. Okay, so up next was the elephant. That was the one that was unmasked, so we'll get to that last. Um, so next after that was the kitty. And uh, here was another one with a black and white motif at the start. And then she, she turns into color while everyone else behind her is still black and white. Um, so there again, I was thinking maybe somebody older. She said she wants to wipe the slate clean. She's never done anything like this before. Um, there was a science room with a telescope in it and stuff. Um, I, I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. Then there was like a pirate thing. I can't figure any of that out quite yet. But, uh, also at the end, I thought this was telling a shattered rose. And I thought to myself, the same as one of the ladies said it, I think it was Nicole again, um, said, oh, maybe something to do with The Bachelor. That was my key, uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. But uh, the song she sang was Dangerous Woman by Ariana Grande. Um, so the panel was sort of all over the place on this one. Um, I forget who even their guesses were for this. Um, was This This was the like Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie guesses. Every season, everyone always guesses Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie. One of these days, yes, I imagine Nicole Richie will certainly do this show. Maybe Paris Hilton as well. Um, but here's my guess for this. This is a little out there. This is more sort of based on the voice, but I do have 
a little bit of, of a hint with the clue package. My guess for this is Sarah Highland, who plays the eldest daughter on Modern Family of the, uh, the Dunphy part of the family. Um, number one, Modern Family is done this season, so I'm not sure if they've already wrapped filming, but, you know, either way, she's in California, so it would make sense. She's already kind of there. Um, but she is dating, or maybe even engaged to, uh, someone who was on The Bachelorette and Bachelor in Paradise. So that's where the Shattered Rose comes in. And also just the whole thing of, like, um, you know, I'm only really known for one thing. I want to expand my thing, you know, my horizons. Because that's sort of what the judges were on about. Robin Thicke was like, oh, yeah, like, I don't think it's Paris Hilton because she's known for perfume and she's known for so many things. Um, and he didn't even mention this, but Paris Hilton did cut an album uh, about 15 years ago. So, I mean, she, you know, not that she's primarily known for her singing, of course, but Sarah Hyland, I think, is only known for her acting abilities. So she wants to step out in that way. I don't know, just the vibes I was getting from The Voice... Uh, and then also the rose, the rose clue, led me to Sarah Highland. So that's my guess for the kitty. Up next was the taco. This one to me, I think, is easy unless I'm way off base. Um, but uh, the clues were that uh, he's been a comforting part of our lives for decades. And then it panned out, and there was a table full of VHS tapes. Um, he said he was in a good place. Uh, there was a trolley, which looked a lot like the Mr. Rogers trolley, um, but the, the panel didn't go Mr. Rogers with it. They immediately said, okay, San Francisco. Um, and then he said, uh, two enchiladas and beyond, last man standing. Um, okay, so I think they want us to think it's Tim Allen because of last man standing and because of two uh, enchiladas and beyond. And obviously he's been a part of our TV lives for decades with home improvement and stuff. But here's the problem. They're never that on the nose with it. Uh, and, in fact, all of that stuff went completely over the panel's head. They didn't even think of Tim Allen. Um, once again, Ken guessed Martin Short, which isn't a terrible guess based on the vocal. The song he sang was Fly Me to the Moon. I don't think it's a terrible guess based on the vocal. But um, he's from Canada, so that has nothing to do with San Francisco. Ken did actually pull it around to San Fran because he said... Martin Short's movie Inner Space was filmed in San Francisco, or takes place there, or whatever. Okay, that's fair. Um, but I think Robin is right on the nose with this one. I think it's Bob Saget. Um, vocally, okay, it sort of makes sense. Uh, I do think it actually sounds more like Martin Short than Bob Saget, but been a part of our lives for decades, uh, you know, a comfortable part of our lives for decades. Comfortable meaning hanging on the couch, laughing at the funniest home videos, but also laughing at Full House, which I never liked that show. But it took place in San Francisco, and the morning show he was on on that show was, wasn't it called, like, Wake Up San Francisco or something? So um, so that led me to that. Uh, and then I think even with, with the good, I'm in a good place clue, I think they were sort of throwing us off and maybe we're thinking it's Ted Danson or something. But no, I believe this is Bob Saget. I think Robin is uh, right on the money with this one. Uh, okay, so up next was the mouse. Um, she said she is a leader in her field. She's uh, larger than life. Uh, on the football screen, it was like a football motif. Um, all of these, just like the first round of Group A, all of these were like classroom-type motifs. So she, hers was on a football field. Um, on the chalkboard, it, said it had a bang-bang formation. Um, it also said who's the boss at some point, um, which I don't know if that leads us to believe it's Judith Light or something or Alyssa Milano, but, um, you could think many things from the package, but then the song was Get Here by Alita Adams, and to me that voice is unmistakably Dion Warwick, which Robin again said. Uh, the other people were, again, sort of all over the place with their guesses, um, uh, uh, Nicole said Darlene Love, who I thought the Christmas tree was last year. So I could see Darlene Love doing it at some point. But uh, vocally, I think this is for sure Dion Warwick. Um, the only thing in the clues that really leads me to believe it's Dion Warwick... Um, so the voice leads me to believe that. But the clue package... So um, it 
it had two players running off the field uh, or running, you know, towards the tackle dummy or whatever. The one said 19, the other said 79. So, um, you know, I'm all about the numbers meaning something on this show. So, okay, 1979, is that the year this person was born? It most definitely wasn't because the person has an older voice. So I looked up Dionne Warwick in 1979, and uh, she had obviously had a lot of albums by then, but that was the year of her self-titled album, Dion, which obviously was a huge turning point for her, and it was the first album to go platinum, and there were gold pom-poms. I know gold and platinum are two different things, but, you know, Nicole said, oh, I wonder if that's about gold records. She had a couple of gold records before 1979, but that was her platinum, her first platinum album was Dion, and that was in 1979. So I think this is pretty clearly uh, Dion Warwick. Um, I think Robin was right again on that. Now, finally, we have the banana. Um, so he has a cowboy hat on in the package. It's a party vibe. It's sort of like the school quad. He's like just lounging around with his buddies, hanging out, uh, you know, hung over from the night before. Oh, you know, what did I do last night? Flashes back to 12 hours earlier. He's on the party bus. Um, there was a blue collar in the grass. So the panel was all thinking, okay, somebody from the blue collar comedy tour, um, and he said something about having a daughter. Uh, the song he sang was A Little Less Conversation by Elvis. So the panel was, again, all over the place with the guesses. Um, there was something about I, I hoot, and then there were, I don't know, something. I didn't pick up on this, but Robin did. Um, he thinks it's Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish, because there was. he said I hoot, which I did pick up on that. And I guess there was something about fish, or blowfish or something, also in the package. So he was all on that train, and they were like, no, you'd be able to tell Darius's voice. And Robin said, nah, because whoever it is, they're doing an Elvis impression. So their voice is kind of going to get lost in the shuffle, which I agreed with. Um, but everybody else was all over the blue-collar stuff. Bill Engvall, um, maybe Jeff Foxworthy. So I had actually considered Bill Engvall for the Bob Saget one, because of the last man standing clue, I was like, okay, this is not Tim Allen. That's too obvious. They want us to really think it's Tim Allen. So I looked up some of the other people that have been on Last Man Standing as regular cast members, and Bill Engvall and Jay Leno have both been on in recent seasons. Um, but none of the other clues match up, except for Jay Leno with the I've been a comfortable part of your home for decades. But he has nothing to do with San Francisco or trolleys. You know, he's a New York guy. So that did not speak to me at all, so I, and the voice didn't really sound like Jay Leno anyway, but I did think maybe Bill Engvall, but again, nothing really with San Francisco, and I wouldn't say he's been a, a comfortable part of our TV lives for decades, so that's why I went Bob Saget on that, but I considered Bill Engvall for that. I don't think this one is actually Bill Engvall or anyone from the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. I think the Blue Collar is a ruse. Follow me on this one, folks. I think it's Brett Michaels from Poison. Um, you've got the cowboy hat, which Brett Michaels always wears a cowboy hat, basically ever since, like, the Every Rose Has Its Thorn video 30-plus years ago. Um, the cowboy hat is his trademark. And then also the party bus thing. Um, so, you know, he was known for bringing girls on the tour bus and having sex with them. Also, the Rock of Love show that he did, you know, there was a whole, like, tour bus vibe going on there. Um, I know he has children. I don't know if he has a daughter. I did not look that up. I try not to delve too deep into this until I start making my guesses. But um, I, I don't. the voice to me definitely doesn't sound like Jeff Foxworthy, so I, I don't think it's him. I think the blue collar is a ruse. Maybe there is something to do with... Well, you know, look, okay, hold on. Hold on, I got it now. Uh, so Poison is, you know, kind of an everyday, every guy kind of band. A lot of their videos showed people in blue-collar jobs, like Nothing But A Good Time has like a dishwasher, um, and he hears Poison on the radio and cranks it up. Okay, I've made the blue-collar fit, too, for Brett Michaels. I'm, I'm sticking with my guess, Brett Michaels for the banana. Okay, um, so finally we get to the elephant, and here, he's the one that got voted out. So in the package, we had the drum kit. Uh, he found his calling when he was young. He's a one-man show. There was a bicycle sign. Um, and then I wrote a lot of the other signs down 
uh, that he was walking down the street with. Christmas art, uh, Christian's Art Supply, Jessica's Flowers, Ten Cent Ice Cream, Paradise Apartments, and then the number 436, and then he talked about uh, being in a White House, which of course everybody assumed was the White House, um, which turned out to be true. So the song was Friday, I'm in Love. This one, gang, I had no clue on. Um, the panel didn't either. And Robin even said, you know, man, if you had put anything about skateboarding in the package, we would have known. And Nick Cannon was like, well, that's why we didn't. You know, you have to keep, keep them on your toes a little bit. You know, the only famous skateboarder really is Tony Hawk. So that would have been very, very obvious. So um, the bicycle thing, I guess, has to do with the name of his company, they said. Um, <coughs> Uh, he is a one-man show. That part makes total sense. I couldn't find anything about the names Jessica or Christian in his uh, stats. I sort of, after they revealed it was him, I, I went to his Wikipedia page and I was like, okay, well, he's been married four times, but none of them are to Jessica. None of his kids are named Jessica or Christian. He has a kid named Riley. Um, so, yeah, I mean, th they, I don't think, gave us great clues for Tony Hawk. I couldn't figure out what the 436 had to do with. Um, I couldn't figure out what the Paradise Apartments had to do with Ten Cent Ice Cream. So th those were all not great clues. Um, the White House thing, yes, he per he performed a skating trick or whatever for Obama at the White House. Um, and he was young when he found his calling, I'll give him that. The drum kit, I don't know what that has to do with anything. Um, but yeah, I guess the big clue there was the, the bicycle thing because his company is... Something with, with bike, uh, bike in the name. I don't know. Um, but I was thinking it was a drummer because of, well, the drum kit in the package. Um, you know, they had sort of talked about Tommy Lee or Travis Barker in the package. Um, I actually was thinking more on the, the Travis Barker tip because, I mean, he sings back up in some of the Blink songs and also some of his other projects like the Transplants and stuff. So that, that part made sense to me. Um, he's certainly not a one-man show, but, um, I don't know. I just, I, I got the vibe, you know, Nick Cannon pointed out that whoever it is has an athletic body, um, and Tommy, Tommy Lee does as well, but Travis Barker is, like, real cut up. So, I don't know. I was, I was thinking it was Travis Barker, um, so I was way off on that, but so was the panel. You know, the clues were not great, I don't think, for, for Tony Hawk. Um, and he jokingly said he only had about one more song left in him, so he's glad he got out early. So, um, all right, so without any further ado, those are my guesses for episode one of Group B. Um, I guess they'll do what they did with Group A, so the next two weeks we'll be seeing these same people again until they're down to just three, and then we will be introduced to Group C. Um, but uh, a quick recap for Group A, the three people that are left... So we've got the White Tiger, um, that is Ron Gronkowski, or Rob Gronkowski, I don't know, he's a football player, so I don't know who he is, but uh, Turtle, I think is Jesse McCartney, and that is from you guys on the comments and all of the clues, um, so that has led me to, to that. Um, I still don't know the kangaroo. Uh, my best guess is Jordan Sparks, but I don't think it sounds like Jordan Sparks. Um, there is a person that two people have mentioned to me called Jordan Woods, who I, I don't know who that is, so it could be like last year when I didn't know who Adrian Bailon was, um, and it turned out to be her. But uh, Jordan Woods, let's just look her up real quick. I guess she is some sort of a reality person, maybe. She's a model. Uh, okay... She's young, 22 years old. Okay, Jordan Woods. What else do we know about her? Oh, she's a she's one of the Kylie Jenner clan. Well, that's why I don't know her. I, I hate the Kardashians. I hate the Jenner clan. Okay, so that makes sense. So maybe it's Jordan Woods, which would make sense because I've never heard of her. Um, but I guess I still got to go with Jordan Spark because I'm trying to guess people I've heard of. Um, but all right, so thank you so much for watching. Those are my guesses. Please comment below. I love hearing your guys' thoughts as well on all of this stuff. Um, you know, the reason, the whole reason I started making these videos is because other than my brother, I didn't really have anybody to talk to about my guesses for the, for season two. So I wanted to get more people in on it. So please comment. I love hearing from you guys. Um, and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.